Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot. It is November 5th. My name is Cindy and I thank you for joining me. So, um, it's getting kind of interesting in Washington, boy oh boy. I mean, there's stuff coming out every time you turn around. Um, I, I understand that there's governor races going on today. So I didn't follow those. I didn't, uh, uh, frankly, I wasn't even aware they were happening. So I guess tomorrow we'll know with some clarity what those results look like. Um, but I understand that Trump was out and about trying to convince the um, Republicans that they, you know, they needed to vote Republican and, and, you know, keep the Republican Party strong. I don't know how well that's going to work. I mean, certainly with the Republicans that think he's the best thing since sliced bread, I'm sure it worked just fine. Um, the rest of the world is busy taking in the information pertaining to, you know, what was said in those uh, depositions. Uh, more and more stuff is being uncovered about Trump and uh, the Ukraine. And, and more importantly, the things that were going on in the Ukraine because they were sort of appeared to be a little bit directed by what Russia wanted. So um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on, you know, in all of those months months and months as we were waiting for things to start moving forward and it was so frustrating uh we're now in a completely different place we are now in a place where information is a, a coming out and coming at us at a um a really really quick quick pace uh yesterday the uh, jury, jury selection started in the the roger stone thing um that Lev guy who was working with Giuliani, um, he's now saying he wants to talk to the the people, you know, to the impeachment inquiry. He has something to say because, as usual, as soon as um, Trump saw that there could be somebody who who could maybe get him into a little bit of trouble, well, he doesn't know them. He's never seen them. He doesn't know what they. He, he nothing. He knows nothing. Well, people who have been working with you and supporting you and giving you money and and you know doing what you needed done to, to continue your success, they tend to get a wee little bit testy when all of a sudden they get this, oh, well, I, I don't know who that is. And he's you know, the coffee boy. He's the coffee boy. I don't even know if he was the coffee boy. So, you know, again, this man has the most amazing ability to um, self-sabotage. So what I wanted to take a look at today, given kind of everything that's going on, was I wanted to take a bit of a dive into the Russia-Ukrainian Trump kind of triad, that connection, and see if we can get some additional insights or guidance or even perhaps some clarity on what might be, you know, coming forward, in, in, you know, in the next weeks and months. Um, I have been asked to do a deep dive on Putin, and at some point, I, I will. Right now, I, I have to say, I'm kind of um, I needing to just think it out because I don't want to uh, title it or do anything in such a way so that it would attract um, those Russian bots and, and a lot of, you know, stuff sort of coming at me that, you know, I don't want to hear about because it's crazy. So I just I just need to think about the phrasing on that. And um, I have a lovely list of questions, but it's just going to take, you know, probably in the next week or two, I will do a deep dive specifically on good old Vlad. But for right now, I want to do something just a little broader. Um, so come on down because I have a question. I want to know about the relationship between the United States and Russia and the Ukraine. So let's find out. Trump, Russia, Ukraine, Trump, Russia, Ukraine, Trump, Russia, Ukraine. Okay, so um, one of the things that sort of came out, I think it was yesterday, um, was the awareness of the fact that Giuliani has not pulled back 
Like he, he's still doing what he's doing to promote this agenda that he wants, you know, promoted, which frankly, I'm starting, starting really, really to think um, is being engineered by Manafort way more than maybe we thought. I think, you know, it was sort of like, okay, well, Manafort's in jail. He's, he's out of, he's out of it. He's not out of it. He's pulling strings and doing what he can do from there. He is still manipulating. So there's that. This chariot clearly indicates that this nonsense is continuing. It's continuing to move forward. There is money involved. Um, there is literally a Russia is absolutely out to destroy democracy. And let's face it, you know, there's a lot of countries and places in the world that are, you know, democratic, that have, you know, democracy. But mm, if you can make the United States fall, you really have put a significant blow into the whole, you know, philosophy, understanding concept, because it's a big country with a lot of people. And frankly, you know, it's, it's sort of one of the things that they're known for. And so if Russia can somehow cripple that or bring it down, um, that is an absolute, you know, present gift from on high for Putin and the plans that he has and you know it it's all about money with Putin and Russia it is all about you know either he's trying to position one of his favorite oligarchs into even making more money part of it is just pure evil intent part of it is you know, the status or, or he wants to achieve something that he feels was taken away from him. You know, he kind of really wants to get back to that, um, you know, that Soviet Union kind of concept where all kinds of countries and land masses are completely under his control. So, yeah. So that's his motivation. It's not like he has a single motivation. It's like multi-pronged of the things that he wants to accomplish um, as Russia's leader. And the reality of the situation is, is that with Trump and the Giuliani's and those people who are operating from an agenda that is only and exclusively about money, when you've got that going on, he can just, this thing can just keep on rolling forward, and it is. So be very mindful of the fact that there is going to be continually more and more that comes out because it hasn't stopped. It, it, it rolls on. And, you know, light is getting shed on things. Things are starting to, you know, there's a bit more clarity coming into focus. Things that were hidden um, are, are revealed and secrets that were kept are also bubbling up to the surface. Things that were done in the dark and behind the scenes are, are you know, gaining some light. Um, in some ways, <laughs> in some ways, it is really, really going to take a complete change in government in order to um, get this situation with Russia back into a place where they are not exerting the amount of power that they currently are in the United States. You know, people are greedy and people will do a lot of things because they're greedy. And when you're talking about people who have been in government for a long time and are used to that power and are used to sort of favors and kickbacks, it was a really, really easy step for them to just kind of become those people who can really, really easily be bought. So that's what you've got going on here. Those are the dynamics. And, you know, Ukraine kind of got stuck in the middle um, in a way that, uh, honestly, they had not anticipated. And, and I really, really do believe that Trump 
um, used this same game plan or program with the previous um, president of the Ukraine. And so in some ways, he was like really surprised when the next president didn't simply fall into line. And when it started to look like this guy seriously was actually going to try to fight corruption, well, that was it. That was all it took for him to go on, you know, the hit list. So part of it is, I mean, he was offered things. He didn't want them. He didn't like how it was unfolding. He didn't like what he was hearing. He couldn't figure out, Lashenko I'm talking about, he couldn't figure out how to um, stay out of it kind of withdraw himself from being in the middle of the mess because his country so needed um, that aid. So, you know, it's a different, and I mean, you can see, I mean, he's done a little bit where he said, okay, well, we'll look into this and we'll look into that. Honestly, he is sort of hoping and praying that before he actually has to produce something um, that, Trump has lost some of the power, so that sort of the uh, pressure uh, backs off a little bit. Well, is it actually going to do that? I don't know. But he's, uh, Lashenko is literally pulling, you know, he's dragging his feet on this because it's one thing to say, yeah, we'll look into that. And it's quite another to say these are the results. So he's kind of trying to stand in there. Yeah, yeah, we'll look into it. That, that's the sort of um, <laughs> road he's on. And he's hoping to stay on it, frankly. Okay. You know, so really interesting, right? So in order to facilitate um, Trump and Trump's wishes and frankly, Trump's agenda and make no mistake, Trump, Trump doesn't actually get credit for the agenda because he's not smart enough. And I'm not exactly saying that Manafort and Giuliani are smart, but what I am saying is they have more experience um, knowing how to manipulate sort of political wins. And so in order for that to have all kind of the situation, you know, that the United States is in now, for that to have been created, a lot of people had to turn away from the truth. They literally had to say, uh, yeah, you know what? We are going to go with an alternative set of facts, right? We are going to just see things differently. And if we stay in this bubble, um, then you know what? We're absolutely going to um, sort of not get the truth, if you will, thrown in our face, okay? So what they did when the Republicans kind of, you know, it was all in for Trump because they saw that they didn't have any real maneuverability. They really, really did take on some heavy burdens and they really have um, boxed themselves into a corner, right? I mean, they, they were screaming about um, procedure, for example, with the impeachment stuff. And so then everything got voted on and, and stuff is getting released. And, and Trump, meanwhile, is screaming, you need to defend me on the merits. Trump doesn't understand there are no good merits with which to defend him. So, you know, more and more, Republicans are really, really starting to feel the pressure of, um, or the magnitude, for example, of how much they have personally risked, risked and put in jeopardy by going along with this um, nonsense. And again, you know, some of them had really good reasons to go along because they also were benefiting, okay? But, and even the ones who maybe weren't directly benefiting um, from Russia, are benefiting now because Trump is, you know, giving money or directing money to their own re-election campaigns. So, um, yeah, it, it's I, this isn't sustainable. I guess is is the point, right? It's they're not going to be able to sustain this because as more and more information comes out, there are continual assessments being done. People are getting really tired of uh, trying to sort of defend what honestly just, it doesn't even make sense to defend. And they're mindful of the fact that if 
the only people who are hearing them sprout this nonsense is the people within that that bubble, you know, the Fox News, the Rush Limbaugh people, like that, okay? But they're aware as they're standing there talking to reporters that that sound clip is going to be heard on, you know, not only um, the big American channels, but very often um, in other parts of the world. And they're starting to really recognize that the price they're paying might be too high a price, but because they backed themselves into a corner, they may not necessarily be able to um, extract themselves, pull out of it. So they really are in a bit of a pickle. It's a continual juggling. They never know what's going to come up. They never know what's around the corner. They never know what other dirty dealings have yet to surface, but are probably going to. And so it puts them in a very difficult position of trying to walk a balance trying to walk the line um, except they realize that literally the line is disintegrating under them okay it's like um, you know sand being washed out to sea right it's like what they were standing on one minute kind of isn't there it's 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 floated away into the ocean and that's exactly how they're feeling and they're trying very hard to figure out how to navigate this and of course because Trump is his own best flip and everything well they um there isn't sort of a concise firm strategy coming out of the the White House and things are starting to come out faster and faster and faster more about Ukraine oh my lord more about Russia more about Trump and Giuliani and a few others uh, dealings and and what was going on there Pope Pompeo is in this up to his neck he's going to have a great deal of explaining to do going forward and he's another one whose reputation frankly is trashed it I what I want to say is even though this whole situation the triad continues to move forward okay the Ukraine Russia Trump even though that kind of is continuing to roll forward, everybody is getting very wise to their tricks, okay? Everybody is starting to clue into um, exactly how deep this is, how pervasive this is, how really um, corrupt this is. And you're going to see sort of a bit of a pushback where people are saying, you know, again, you are crossing lines that as a country, we cannot, we, we can't cross. And so it's going to be interesting as more and more information comes out. And, you know, what you're going to be hearing is, well, this is the same playbook. They've done this before. You know, this is what they do. This is all they have. This is all they know, to, you know, what to do. They're going to run out of uh, tricks and diversions. So that's going to be kind of really, really interesting to, um, to see. And ultimately, you have... Um, you know, justice prevailing. You have the abundance and the riches um, that belong to the United States ultimately staying in the United States. And, and those um, riches and abundance at this point really are, it, it really is the democracy, okay? It really is freedom from interference in other from other countries. So um, very, very interesting. Now, what I want to do is I just want to kind of reshuffle the cards a little bit. And um, I want to see if there are going to be um, sort of any more significant bombshells dropped in the next sort of month, right? I mean, things are just continually coming out. So what I'm looking for is, you know, is somebody other than good old Les there going to um, decide that, you know what, he, he can no longer take the fall for not only Trump or Giuliani or anybody else. He has his own life and he has to take care of that. So are there going to be a few more people that come out? Is John Bolton going to come out? And you know, I, I hear the people on TV saying it's really not likely to happen. He has this book coming out, whatever, whatever. I actually, every time I have asked, I have gotten a yes. Maybe not like this week or, to, or next week, but there is going to be information that comes out from him 
kind of basically before his book comes out, okay? So in the process of this impeachment situation, with what's going on there, I actually looks like he may be um, prepared to offer some information. And so, like I say, we'll, we'll watch on that. But I want to see if there's just going to be any more significant, um, significant big kind of bombshells. So, um, explosive insights regarding um, impeachment. Significant insights regarding impeachment. Significant insights regarding impeachment. The committees are working away. They're being very diligent. They're going backwards in time. They're looking at... Um, you know, events that have taken place. They are looking at partnerships between Trump and other countries. And they are understanding that in some ways they, they need to present enough to give great clarity and insight. And they need to not pre present so much that it just becomes overwhelming and you can't keep sort of the people and the players and the game like in straight lines in your head. So they're walking a balance, but they are more than up for the job. And they're going to um, continue investigating quietly as stuff is being released. There is literally more information coming to them. All right, so, um, yeah, like really, the, the Democrats are, are working hard, they're assessing, they're looking at how they're going to communicate their message, and their focus, and their, you know, their primary focus is exposing the truth and getting the truth and the facts out, so that more and more people um, gain some clarity over this, because again, um, if you've been following it, it's earth shattering and it's important. If you have been busy doing other things with your life and involved in your life, you sort of have gotten what's going on in bits and pieces. So part of it is putting a very clear narrative together um, that is based on facts and truth with just enough backstory to string it together so that it's fluid and it makes sense. And that is the goal of what they're trying to achieve. And that is what they're going to um, be able to achieve. We've got some information coming forward, some communications. Um, and we've got, you know, again, that sense of people needing to justify or defend or try to explain. And it, their stories become more and more convoluted. They, they, they become more disjointed. They make less and less sense because... It's very difficult um, when you tell a lie to be able to keep your lies straight. And, and the most interesting thing about this is it's not even, I mean, yes, of course they lie, but, but what they do that is sort of so fascinating to watch, and I swear, I swear, would probably not work in any other country in the world, you know, where there was democracy is these people come out and, and literally they say, um, I, am, I am standing in front of a blue wall and the wall is green, but it's blue. And people just accept it. Or it's, you know, I know I said I was in front of a blue wall, but actually it's a green wall and it's green and that's all. Like, it's crazy the way they just flip their stories. Um, and people just seem to accept it. And it is remarkable to me that, um, a lot of these people that, you know, that are following Trump, 
that they don't e at least see that because of course that kind of information gets played on Fox, right? But for some reason they have been convinced or led to believe that instead of it being, this was a lie and this is a lie. So how can you believe that this isn't a lie? Uh, what they have been sort of convinced of is that as the facts shift and change or as the story shifts and changes, they don't see it as um, that the original story was wrong or a lie. They've somehow been convinced that it's an evolution. You know, it's an unfolding. And so they're just prepared to accept it. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm specifically looking, obviously, for a card that's going to tell me if there are any significant bombshells. I'm not actually getting one. What I'm getting is more of a smooth unfolding of information. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be things that are amazing and, and, you know, gobsmacking and things that just make you shake your head. But what I, what at this point, it doesn't look like there's going to be sort of a big, huge explosion it feels again more like that drip 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 every day every day more information comes out and more information is starting to get to the uh, citizens of america and people are starting to zero in and focus in and, and kind of pay attention so uh I, you know again it's not over it continues the behavior continues and it's just being, and it, honestly, they don't even, they're not even smart enough to keep it quiet. Um, so more of that, you know, more sh people shaking their head and holding their head in their hands and saying, I, I can't believe these guys are actually getting away with this and nobody is stopping them. Nobody is questioning them. No, everybody just accepts what they say. But carry on, that's exactly what's going to happen. But keep in mind that the percentages of people who live in the bubble is a small percentage. It is not the majority. It is not the energy and the feeling that predominates the country. So keep those energies focused. Keep them positive. And remember what I said. You don't want to talk about negatives and you need to make sure that you don't use them because they cancel. So be careful of the thoughts you send out, but keep them going. Um, and... Enjoy whatever uh, is going on in your world today. And I will look forward to seeing you most likely tomorrow. Um, and until then, take care, be well, and I'll see you really soon. Bye.